Good morning, Internet. I'm Pastor Goodman. This is the Largely Catechized Life, where we sit down with Luther's large catechism and learn stuff. Uh, we are talking about the Lord's Prayer, more specifically the fifth petition, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we have sort of made prayer into a source of forgiveness. We, we hear this petition and we say, all right, you just got to ask God to forgive you, and he will. Because, well, it says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we, we think this idea that if you just ask God to forgive you, he will, would be a comfort. It's always intended to be a comfort. And I suppose that it would be if everything always went the way that it was supposed to. But then again, if everything always went the way that it was supposed to, what sins would you really need forgiveness for in the first place? See, things don't always work all that well because we're sinners and sin breaks stuff. You can say God will forgive you if you just ask him, but it all starts to fall apart here where we actually find ourselves to be sinners because sometimes I can't even keep track of all my sins. I am just so good at them. I can do them without thinking about it. Sometimes I don't even realize that I hurt other people because I am so self-absorbed and I don't recognize the fact that I am sinning all along. Sometimes I would much rather excuse my sin or blame other people than confess it. It is hard to keep track of every single last sin and then specifically ask forgiveness. And that's when I'm healthy. What if you die before you get a chance to ask for forgiveness? What if you die like mid-sin? What about, what about suicide? See, if you put the whole thing on yourself and you asking for forgiveness, this thing stops being a comfort right at the moment that you need it the most, when we're trapped in sin and we actually need help. So God teaches us to pray. And Luther in the large catechism sees more than you asking God and because you ask God, he forgives you. In the large catechism, Luther writes, Dear Father, forgive us our trespasses, not as though he did not forgive sin without and even before our prayer, for he has given us the gospel in which is pure forgiveness before we prayed or ever thought about it. But this is to the intent that we may recognize and accept such forgiveness. See, your sins are not forgiven because you prayed. Your sins are forgiven because Jesus died for you. Did he wait for you to ask him to die on the cross 2,000 years before you were born? Did he need your permission to do that thing? Well, then maybe let the whole thing stand on the cross where Christ himself says your sins are forgiven, where Christ himself says it is finished. If it is finished, then it doesn't carry forward until you remember to ask. Maybe what if God, I don't know, loved you even before you were formed? died for you, even before you realized what you were doing was sin that needed forgiveness in the first place? What if we could look to the cross and recognize our sins are forgiven because Jesus died for us sinners? This turns prayer into a comfort that it's supposed to be because it points us to where he has already done this thing. We rejoice and accept such forgiveness gladly, but it was given long before we ever asked. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Well, where does all forgiveness come from? What a joy. What a comfort. Thanks be to God, he has already done it. Now we can actually answer those really tough questions. What if I don't even realize that I sinned? Well, we just heap the whole thing on the cross. Your sins, plural, all of them are forgiven. What about suicide? It's sin. There's no question. It is against the fifth commandment. You can recognize it by the clear word of God. You can see the damage that it causes in everybody's life who has to clean up the mess left behind. The real question is, though, did God work forgiveness? Was it received by that person in baptism? Did they hear the word of God? Did they receive the supper that forgives their sins? Did they receive all of the places that God would firmly place this forgiveness, that he has won for them on the cross? Because that way we wouldn't have to dare put the whole thing on our own shoulders and try and keep track of it or ask properly for it or measure the whole thing in our asking. Because, yeah, yeah, sometimes it really does get so dark that the devil is so sent against us that as Luther in the large catechism writes, it is not possible always to stand firm in such a persistent conflict. So God teaches us to pray. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us so that we would recognize the source of such forgiveness. It is not in our asking. It is in our Father who art in heaven, who for the sake of the death of Jesus Christ has already done this for you. There is mercy then where Jesus has died for sinners, not where sinners properly remember to ask. And so there will even be people who have committed suicide in heaven. It is not your asking for forgiveness. It is the reception of these gifts where God would give them.
that's not in your asking. Prayer is supposed to be a comfort. And so let it be. As we pray, forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, look to the cross where he has already done this thing and then find peace because that's what it's for. Amen.